Welcome back to Retro Rewind. In today's video, we're talking about Borderlands. <laughs> Locke, we survived. We made it. We both went out, watched the movie yesterday, and this was so, I'll just spoil it, spectacularly bad that we decided, normally we put up our, our movie reviews of things we see in the theaters on Saturday, but we just had to get this out as soon as humanly possible because we need to vent. <laughs> We need to vet about what we witnessed. Uh, but yeah. before anything else, I always, I'd like to have you introduce yourself. How are you, Locke? Uh, I don't really know how to how to put that. I'm doing okay, I guess. But that was um, <laughs> that was something. That was. I think this is. Well, I told you in private, or I told in private. I told you on Discord. Like this is. <laughs> there's been three movies I walked out on in my entire life. That's <laughs> Van Helsing with Hugh Jackman, sadly. Oh, no. um, Batman versus Superman, Suicide Squad, and this would have been the fourth one if we didn't agree to do a review. Yes. It. Yeah. I, I'll have everyone know. I watched the movie last night and I immediately DM Locke because I was seeing it ahead of him. And I said, I hope you know, I sat in the theater the whole way through this because I said, I feel you're going to walk out on this. And I did that because I was like, if Locke walks out, I get it. I wanted to walk out and I've never done it before, but this would have 100% would have would have been that. I, I, saw the trailers you saw the trailers we knew borderlands was not shaping up right on a vision standpoint like everything you saw yeah. in the trailers and feared was was exactly what you expected right like the, the casting was terrible uh the the way they attempted to capture this world was awful the writing was i, I don't know i like it, there's no way a human wrote it's, this it's that bad it's incredible yeah it was written by didn't you have to like at every scene i had the feeling like i was watching a stage play of like yeah. actors yeah Literally, was, the no one wanted to be there. No, I like the production value of the sets. It was literally like you were watching a stage play. Oh, dude. I think that this might have worse CG than Phantom Menace to me. Did, oh, yeah, definitely. Like, did, not only that, but there are moments there's voice dubs that don't <laughs> lip sync. Did you catch that? Yeah, oh, yeah, plenty of Unbelievable. times. Unbelievable. Yeah. There is a part where Kate Blanchett like, looks over her shoulder and her mouth stops moving and she's still talking. <laughs> it's like I'm watching a buggy video game, but it's a movie. I'm like, I, I obviously I have limited movie experience. We know that. that's why Retro Rewind ex it exists. But I had no idea something like this could actually get released into theaters, especially when it's attached to such a popular IP. I know. <laughs> Borderlands isn't on the level, like I say, Fallout or Halo or something like that. But I looked at this. I was like, this is arguably the worst movie I've ever seen. Oh, it is. Yeah, very close. What makes me because it really makes me angry almost. And movies rarely make me angry except for Batman versus Superman. But this is another <laughs> one because it's 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 horrible. It's bad, but it's not bad enough to be good again. You know, yeah. it's like at that at that three out of ten level, but not mm -hmm. the one out of ten level where mm -hmm. it's so bad that it's that it's fun to watch again. Yeah. So it's like excruciating to sit there. My theater was empty, by the way. I was the only one there. Me and Laylee were the only ones in the theater. Yep. I don't know. Completely it's, empty. We were like talking during the movie. It was it was kind of a cool experience, honestly. That that was the best part of the movie. But Laylee is not a Borderlands fan. In case anyone's wondering from a different angle, like Locke and I love Borderlands, but when you look at it from her angle non-Borderlands fan, never played the games, knows nothing about it. She said it's one of the worst movies she's ever seen. Like, this is, I would say, objectively a bad movie. It really oh, yeah. is. It, yeah, like, yeah. acting, terrible. Uh, if you're a fan, there's really no fan service here at all. It's PG-13, no, which is also awful. It's, there's, sorry, so there's, like, sorry. nothing connecting to the games on, yeah. like, dark comedy or even gore. Or I, cameos. Yeah, no cameos? Like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think of Jack Black as, as Claptrap? That's the only scene that made me laugh. The only yeah. scene in the entire movie is the one where he uh, rides up to, uh, to, uh, to Lilith and mm -hmm. she shoots him in the eye. And then yeah. she, keeps, she, she does that three that times. That's the, only, that's the only time that made me It that was that one and him shooting out the lead from all the bullets. Oh, that, yeah. That yeah. one got me too. Yeah, Claptrap was definitely the funniest part but, of the movie. But, but why did they cast Jack Black? Because he sounds like Claptrap. Yeah. He doesn't sound like... It literally sounds, you know, you know what this reminded me of, of like a cutscene. This is like the intro to Borderlands 4. <laughs> it's like the God, same level. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah. But th this got me questioning myself. Like, was Borderlands 2 ever good? Wasn't, wasn't that just the same thing as this? Mm. No, I mean, I like the thing with, with, with this movie is even like the plot 
is so unbelievably Stupid. bad. Yeah. It, like it, it hangs completely on the idea that Tiny Tina is a, a, like a child of an Iridian god. And anyone who's played a lick of Borderlands just knows that's not the case. Like you just no. know Tiny Tina is not that, and that this is all about Lilith and that she's the Firehawk. And that's where the story ends up. That like it's all about her becoming the Firehawk. It's like an origin story for Lilith. Now, as someone whose favorite character in Borderlands is Lilith, this movie, that's why I came in so hot, bro. I, I fired this thing up. I was like, this, this is such a steaming pile of garbage in that I like Kate Blanchett, but like I you look at any screenshots of, of, of Lilith, this is everyone's been horribly casted. Roland Kevin Hart is the worst thing oh, I've ever God. seen. It, it, it. The, terrible there's like no funny lines like i don't get how that's even possible but you got like i don't i'm not a fan of kevin hart in any movie but mm. you can imagine that they would give him funny lines but he has no funny lines in this one he's playing like a, a straight straight soldier guy so there's yeah. nothing they don't i i i don't know who this movie is for it's mm. not made by people who played borderlands and it's not made for people who who who, who played borderlands so who is this for the thing that's so weird is that they don't lean into any of like, say the classes like mm. uh, Roland never uses a turret ever. Yep. I'm like, how did you not even get that? Like, okay, I get it. Like, <clears throat> Lilith is it the Firehawk yet? Okay, got it. But like, how is Roland not deploying turrets? Like, how are we not leaning into that? The only little Easter egg I saw was when uh, Lilith was inside the van and they were riding along with Marcus Oh, yeah. And you could see on the far right side of the screen, like some of the typical UI you would see in the Borderlands games for like the weapon machine. I was like, yeah. OK, like, give me more of that and we might have something here. But dude, this to, to say like it, that the, the, the costume design looked like cosplay at a yeah. convention that someone just like picked off of Amazon would be an understatement. But the sets are really what bothered me because I get it. We're coming off this year of like Fallout. And to me, Fallout is like premium fan service at the same time as building out your world further. But yeah. prop design and set design, that show taught me, goes so far into bringing people into the world. And they recreated everything for Fallout. Obviously, they went above and beyond with like power armor, making that completely practical. Practical, And that did a lot for the show. But they like did the stim packs. They did the food. They did the, the everything. They just recreated. It was incredible and i think i feel like borderlands as a universe would be easier to recreate it, as yep. far as i'm concerned especially what this is trying to be modeled after which is the original borderlands um and they couldn't even get that right um you, you know you put it perfectly like when you ask who it's made for it's like well i feel looking at the cast and what's here this is clearly a grab to just create more fans of the borderlands franchise failure on that front and but the thing that i don't even think I, that i don't get is is this supposed to get like younger fans in and i say that because yes sir. i look at tiny tina's wonderland and that was t for teen and that just i said in my review and i said it again when i tested it out one more time for uh retro rebound and our big retrospective there on all the borderlands games i said this game feels like it is so neutered in its writing because it's not trying to offend yeah. you which borderlands one and two had no no cares at all about who they were offending because they were just dark comedy absolutely hilarious and so tiny tina felt like the start of i would say what was really reluctant borderlands humor that just turned into being downright bad but more than anything just stripping away the things that even on like a tonal level made the series good and this movie reminded me a lot of that so i feel like they're on this push to make borderlands as broad and global spanning as possible to all age groups and i don't think it's working at all like i think this is a no. terrible direction for the franchise beyond the movie this is a terrible direction they're going in by just betraying all the values that have it's been established across many games yeah it's insane to me that they didn't base this movie first of all on either borderlands one but especially borderlands two mm -hmm. like handsome jack would have been so cool yeah that would have uh, been I'm, I'm glad they didn't touch him i'm glad they didn't touch yeah him. in hindsight yeah, yeah but that handsome been... jack is is so good one of my favorite ever villains i'm yeah. i i am terrified at the idea of them because the only thing i can think of is the way they can make a second movie is this looked so low budget that maybe they could make enough to be like let's green like a second one 
that's the that's, only thing I could think of. It's doing terribly. That's not going to happen. Like this movie is like done. It's yeah. It's, Dead on arrival, like that. that it, nobody's seeing this. I movie. hope. I, I, I'm sorry. I know it's not like the right thing to say. I hope so. This movie does not deserve to succeed. It really is that bad. Because I want to answer one of the most common questions I got. I posted on Twitter. I survived Borderlands, and and, and Laley took a picture of me after I got out of the theater, and I literally looked dead inside because it was no dramatics. Like that's how I was feeling. And uh, in the full image, you can actually see my phone's upside down. I think I sent it to you, Locke, but yeah, you literally your name is literally on my phone because I literally texted you as soon as I got out of the theater. <laughs> so it's like a fun bit of world building there as well but um but to my original point a lot of people when they saw that picture i put on twitter were like oh like i gotta see it now oh is it so bad it's good and i totally respect and understand that there are definitely some like hard six or seven out of ten movies that like i think of a good example would be the michael bay tmnt films i walked out of them and i was like that's a hard like six out of ten but as a ninja turtles fan like i i found some level of enjoyment in that but I sincerely mean when I say that Borderlands does not offer you any level of enjoyment, any level at all. It, it is terrible. And I think now that we've talked a lot of non-spoilery stuff, do you want to just get into the, the thick of what little was in this movie? Well, and it's like I, hour and a half runtime and, and very little substance in its story just to make sure people got, because I, I think many people listening to this are, gonna, are not going to go out and see this. So I feel like we got to pick this apart for all it's worth. Well, if we can well yeah that that's the question if we can because i don't think there are any spoilers in this movie what are we going to spoil <laughs> you're so like, right that's the point dude like okay we're spoiler modes on you've been warned dude so the whole story as we talked about earlier is about lilith tracking down tina because <laughs> she's apparently the daughter of atlas turns out tiny tina is like this clone, clone. Yeah. With iridium blood mixed into her, and she's a failed clone, and they tried to make it this heartfelt moment. <laughs> and it turns out she, she, so this whole movie, like Tina's like, I'm the special one, I'm the special one. And Lilith just like figures out, like, no, it's, it's actually me. And so, one thing that this movie could have explored that I think would have been cool is like inside the vault of Borderlands, right? Like, I think of Borderlands one as some people found the, the, the ending of that game to be a letdown. Uh, I'm yeah. gonna. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going all over the place with these spoilers, but I'm gonna no, have no, no. to because it's it's important because this is based off the first Borderlands game. So just it's, a warning. Yeah. I don't think you're playing Borderlands One for the story, but it is decent enough where I'll give you the warning. So Borderlands One, at the end of the game, because you you start as four vault hunters. The end of the game, you reach the vault and you find out this vault is a monster, pretty much. Like that's what's happening here. And so Borderlands, the movie, like you go, they go in the vault, and I'm like, okay, cool. Like you see the tentacle monsters. No characters ask any frigging questions at all. They just go in. The, Tiny Tina totally accepts her fate. There's no remorse. Like, I guess I'm not special. Nothing like that. She actually urges Lilith to just kind of flex her ego a bit and, and put the firehawk uh, symbol in the sky above Sanctuary when they're all celebrating. Uh, dude, I was like aghast at just how many leaps of logic just were, were baked into that final stretch of the movie. Uh, where again even if you're not a borderlands fan the plot's just awful right but if you're a yeah. borderlands fan this ending is like known from minute one like tiny tina's my daughter <laughs> yeah. okay like dude it just awful but what, what did you i know what you thought of the story but what, what stood out to you was like the worst about it well i want to say one positive thing too oh positive you're thing. so sweet okay the only thing that i thought was cool was that claptrap was basically r2d2 from mm -hmm. Star Wars, yeah. right? That he had like that the hologram for from her mom, um, yeah. Um, yeah, telling her, telling her, giving her basically her backstory. That was stolen from Star Wars because it's literally R two D two. But it that that was well that gave Claptrap at least something to do instead yeah. of just I mean, being look, annoying. Uh, Borderlands has so many Easter eggs too. Like I I can say yeah. I enjoy that little aspect because that's what I think makes that whole series is like leaning into yeah exactly very popular pop culture uh, references yeah yeah that that's true that's definitely true which it didn't do for the rest of the movie Damn. i think the thing that pissed me off the most was how they treated creek mm. which was just an, a nothing character mm -hmm. of course he's like a, a comic relief character in borderlands 2 as well even when you play him but here what was the purpose why was he even in here like tina's it, it, bodyguard 
It didn't make yes. yeah, it did, didn't make any sense. And Tiny Tina too. I don't know who that actress is. I've never seen her before, but I felt sorry for her. She because- was in uh, Barbie. I believe that's what that's oh, what they said. Yeah. Ariana, yeah, something. Yeah, I think you're right. Because she, I think she could do better. It's not her fault. It's the director's fault. It's Eli Roth's uh, fault. It Your is. Favorite, and you uh, know who Eli Roth was in Locke was Inglorious <laughs> Bastards, and so you know who to blame for this, right? At the end of the is, day, this is Quentin yeah. Tarantino's fault. No, <laughs> <laughs> he made that man. <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Oh man! People are gonna. <laughs> the, com- <laughs> the comments are going to be fun on this one. Uh, uh, no, but yeah, it's all, it, tech- well, not technically, it is all his fault. Mm. Like, what the hell did he do? What This isn't even a movie. Like, it's, it's mm. like I said, it's a cut scene. Cause I, I keep thinking, like, what, what spoilers can we talk about? But there literally are no spoilers. We went over the entire movie already. There is just nothing. <laughs> we really did. It's there so is funny. nothing. Yeah, there is nothing here. There's yeah. just not the only thing they showed sh- sanctuary and it didn't look like sanctuary. Yeah. I, um, okay. So that wasn't yeah. just me. I was like, it, I just played Borderlands two for a little bit of the video, but I'm like, am I misremembering? I was like, this doesn't have no. like even the color grading, right? Like yeah. the, the things that give the environments a feel like sanctuary is a very blue city and it was like yeah. orange and red. And I was like with yeah. yellow pipes. I'm like, what is this cheap looking? Sorry, piece of shit. I was like, this is terrible. It feels like, you have a better read and understanding of movie budgets, so I'm curious if you agree. It feels like the whole budget was blown on the cast. Yeah, which is probably true. Yeah, it had yeah. to be. With all yeah. those names, those are big names they got, for sure. Yeah. Um, if there was anyone who I thought was all right in their role, beyond Claptrack, like, I, I'm not a big Jack Black guy, but, like, I can, I can live with it. Like, I just think, you know, again, this is where it's just, like, management made no sense on this movie. Like, why do you need to pay for Jack Black when you have, like, a probably way cheaper voice actor in yeah. the original Claptrap voice that captures the character perfectly, knows well, some, him well, offers creative direction, that sort of mm-hmm. thing. Did, didn't something happen there? Didn't that actor get fired and then they replaced him in Borderlands he, actually, Oh, yeah. Apparently, Randy Pitchford got into a fist fight with him in a hotel lobby. So, <laughs> hey, speaking of which, we got this great Twitter thread here that Locke and I were oh, actually yeah. losing our minds on. I'm sorry. I got to get into this a bit so gearbox yeah. ceo randy pitchford uh is not winning any fans with his response to the borderlands movie he posted first i am so pumped to watch borderlands with friends family and fans tonight at our premiere event in dallas what is this insane crazy world how did this cast and crew of incredible filmmakers get involved with their dumb little video game hope you all get a chance to see it so naturally the replies are cooking them up so then he quote tweets it and goes oh wow that was so fun the vibe in the room with real people taking the movie as it came and having fun was just awesome. I'm on cloud nine right now. It f- it's fun to feel people having a good time. And someone responded to him <laughs> and said, I hope Borderlands 4 is better than this. To which <laughs> this one gets me every time he goes, did you see it? <laughs> and another guy responds to, La- to, to, to Randy saying, did you watch it? And Randy says, too many times to count. What about you? Or are you just a dick? <laughs> and I just thought this was so funny because this is where I feel like I can't stand Twitter. But this is where I feel like it's justified. Like this man cannot have his head so far up his own ass that he does not know that this movie is abysmal. It's irredeemable. And the the biggest, the, the saddest part of it all is like, again, I kept thinking of the Michael Bay Ninja Turtle movies where Sure. I think yep. the, I think it was the first or the second one was called Out of the Shadows. Anyway, you had one in 2013, I want to say, mm-hmm. that felt it was very mid, but there could yep. have been redeeming factors. And the follow-up movie still had a lot of the same problems. Like you still had like Megan Fox and Will Arnett like soaking up screen time instead of the turtles. Like you still had some of those core issues, but they were they they listened to feedback enough where I was like, this is redeemable movie. Like this is okay enough to have a good time. The problem with Borderlands is leaving the theater. I'm like, there was nothing there. Like you're going to have to recast everyone. You're going to need a bigger budget for a better set. You're going to need more fan service. You're going to need wait, like all these very, what I thought were obvious things for a video game movie, by the way, all of these, I thought were just very, very in your face. Yeah. You're going to have to start completely from scratch. And at that point with this movie, barely making anything, it looks like, you know, no one's going to want to invest in this. So, it's DOA, and I'd I'd be stunned if we get any more from this universe. I do think an animated movie for Borderlands could be pretty great because you've got the yep. art style. I just don't think Borderlands translates well to realism. That's why when they were doing the original Borderlands, 
and it looked very kind of like gritty and realistic they shifted they discovered like this the, and popularized the the cell shaded art style and yeah. kind of gave it this more whimsical tone with like dark comedy on top of it like it was very unique and so yeah. an animated movie would maybe fit borderlands well what's funny is this year we're getting an animated lord of the rings movie like i feel like these should be backwards you oh, know it has to be good please be good yeah yes i hope it is good because then i get to tell you how anime saved lord of the rings <laughs> oh wait is it anime anime oh yeah 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 (laughs) (laughs) this december lock we get to we get to do what we're doing here and review it together that's i wish i was there for that to watch you buy tickets for an anime movie in theaters (laughs) i thought it was just animated i didn't know it was anime oh Oh, yeah yeah let's let's uh lord of the rings war of rohirrim this day this day just keeps getting worse and worse it's oh yeah wow have you you got to see the the art for this this is uh (laughs) <laughs> yeah this is super anime <laughs> it's so good well maybe oh. it's good maybe is it do, do you think it looks good i think so yeah absolutely look at look at okay. the pictures i think i think it looks good i mean you might get sick to your stomach but oh I think dude that's good. disgusting <laughs> that is that is that's uh, how can they how can they do this to me that, oh, uh, uh, i think uh, i think the, the no. combat could definitely look really cool in this type of uh style they could really go crazy with it I thought I thought it was gonna be like beautiful, like Studio Studio Ghibli or something. But this is just <laughs> this is just like the the trash that I think it is. Like, uh. well, wh- what do you think of Rings of Power comparatively speaking? Like, it it's get it gets too much hate for what it was. It wasn't okay. as bad as people pretend it is. Sure, it wasn't great, but it was good. It was like a seven out of ten. You would it say was decent. The Hobbit, for example, because I feel like people go Lord yes. of the Rings, Hobbit, Rings of Power. Yes. Okay. And I think that the trailer they just released for season two looks fucking amazing. Mm. So maybe, maybe they'll Ooh. learn. I think it starts like soon this yeah, week. Yeah, a couple maybe. weeks. Yeah, couple weeks. yeah. Oh, a couple of weeks. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, no, I'm I'm optimistic for that one. This anime, uh, we kid, we joke, of course. I will watch it, and I'm sure it's gonna be cool. I'm sure it's gonna be fun. I I don't Let's think. <laughs> I was gonna say I don't think. They'll lend the Lord of the Rings franchise to like a bad product, but I just remembered Gollum. Like, there's yeah. other stuff there too. There's, so. that, uh, there's that new, uh, more what was it? Return like Minds of, or Return to Moria? Game. Oh yeah, yeah. The, Doesn't the, look the, awful, the, but like they're not yeah. really pumping out high production value stuff right now for yeah. Lord of the Rings. It feels like Rings of Power, though. I I can't speak on. I haven't seen it, but I just feel like where where this anime movie is and where Borderlands is should have been flipped. Like, I, yeah. Like again, this just feels like a blatant grab to make Borderlands way more popular, and if anything, it's destroyed yeah. the the image of of the brand even more. And the pressures on Borderlands Four to to do something great because like you know, I think you and I agree that since Borderlands Two, it's been on a steady decline. You know, I don't think it was as dramatic at first. Like pre sequel was like more Borderlands, and that's not really a bad thing, but it wasn't like fantastic. Borderlands Three is extremely fun to play. Like there's so much content yeah. there. But you have the Calypso twins to deal with, and they are horribly written. And yeah. you move from that to Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, which for some people was like a parallel. For some people, it was actually better. For me, it was worse. So I just feel like every entry since two has been worse. And this is absolutely the worst thing the franchise has produced, by and large. I don't know. I've never played New Tales of the Borderlands, but I, I do think that what we have here That's- from this movie is 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 the worst thing this franchise has ever produced and possibly will ever produce. But that's it's another crippling yeah, to the image. No, you're good. It's it's just it's crippling to the image. Like where yeah. I feel like a lot of people already look at Randy Pitchford and Gearbox a little funny. The the I think the, the quality of the product's gone downhill. They've also produced all time. That's the thing. Like your Gearbox has been associated with like a genre defining game, but also all time worst games like Aliens, Colonial Marines, Duke Nukem Forever, now Borderlands the movie. Like yeah. they like they need way better quality control and they just haven't had it for ages. Uh, but it's anyway, what were you gonna say? Well, it's insane to me because you brought up Tales from the Borderlands 2 or Return to, or whatever it's called. The second one was terrible. But the mm. first one, Tales from the Borderlands, that would be a perfect movie. That's mm. like a great story, great characters. And I, I should have known from the trailers that this one wasn't going to be like that. But I still had hope because the, the actors yeah. in this one gave me a little bit of hope. Eli Roth, even though his movies aren't great or even good, but he has has had a couple of okay movies like Hostel. I think I've... Yeah, I think he's a pretty good director, actually. But it, it gave me hope. I thought, like, maybe maybe this could be something. Yeah. And then 
of course we saw the reviews yesterday and we thought like uh oh that that yeah. doesn't look good and then but i was still had hope i still thought like maybe maybe it could do something and then when i saw that i was alone in the theater that's when i realized like uh oh yeah that's that's not a good sign at all dude the whiplash for my last theater experience this month being deadpool wolverine packed to the brim loud reactions excitement enthusiasm like just no one could get enough of it to like walking into an empty theater with my fiance just like what a what a colossal difference it feels like it's like i almost felt sad walking in there i was like this is terrible like this is gonna like there is literally no day one excitement for this movie no, and it's it's strange because it's releasing at the perfect time for a movie like this. Like the, mm. the like start of August, perfect. It's like a summer blockbuster, what yeah. should have been. It's so <laughs> weird because when is the first time you saw, when is the first time you heard about this? It seems like it was years ago, right? Oh, man. When was it announced? It was a couple of years ago because they, they the first thing they showed off was <laughs> casting decisions. They were like yes. announcing like Kate Blanchett will be Lilith. Uh, Jack Black will be Claptrap. Like they just did that individually. Yeah. And then they did, I think, I don't know if it was that same month or something. They did a like set shot of like all the characters and outfits and people were like, oh no, oh yeah. no. Like this already looks as bad as we expected. Like the, the only one who maybe had an outfit that felt kind of close was I would say Roland. Like I feel like Kevin, Kevin Hart's uh, yeah. outfit for Roland was, I mean, it's really hard to fuck up his outfit. I'm going to be keeping it real. I'm not trying to give too many simple, kudos yeah. here. I think, one thing that was kind of strange that I did appreciate about this movie, it's the weird positive quality, if you will, is Kate Blanchett's walk as Lilith is like identical to the game. Oh, okay, like, that's cool. Yeah. It's it's <laughs> such a little thing, and I don't know if she did it intentionally or whatever, but if you look at Lilith's walk in game versus what you see with her on screen, like I noticed that as someone who again, I think Lilith is the best character in that series. She offers yeah. like so much long term uh, return on investment. And so she got that down. And that was like cool to see. Because again, um, one thing the Fallout TV show did was they had like they, they gave all the actors like free creative will to kind of like imitate stuff in the yeah. background, like from Fallout 1 and 2. And so people were like picking up on like NPC actions from the games being imitated by like Fallout fans. That's the thing. Like Borderlands is such a big franchise that. You like maybe they did this, but I guess it just didn't work out. Like bringing fans on set, having them bring this world to life in their own ways, like inviting yeah. cosplayers in, having them bring to life in their own ways. Yeah, that would what, be cool. What did you think of Mad Moxie? I felt like she wasn't that bad. It, she reminded me of a cosplay player. It's also yeah, played the by, outfit by, what, wasn't great. I feel like she got the tone right. That was at least. It's also okay. so weird because they got all these big actors, and then they got who, who was it? Gina Gershwin, I think they they got playing her, which is. Which doesn't make any mm-hmm. sense. Then if you if you're throwing money at this thing, okay, then get Angelina Jolie or whatever. Like get like yeah. the biggest name you can get as her, and not yeah. like. Well, I guess Kate because Kate Blanchett is like a huge actress. She's great. Mm-hmm. She's like a fantastic actress. Kevin Hart, not personally not a fan of his, but he's like a a, a big huge, actor yeah. too. Jack Black, pretty 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 big actor too. Like, there. Why <laughs> why would you skip costs on everything else? By the way, Marcus, who, I want to look it up because was that the the same actor as in the game? It gave me a feeling like it, yeah. he sounded enough like the part and felt Such the most authentic. Honestly, I I forgot about him. Such who is an it? idiot, dude? I no, I just googled Marcus and <laughs> thought I would get a result, but <laughs> that's, not how, <laughs> that's not how Google works. Um, let me look here at IMDb. Yeah, uh, I he was, oh, Marcus no, he was, is all right too. It's played by Benjamin Byron Davis. I know this guy from somewhere. Oh, it is it is the guy from. Oh no 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 no. Hang on. He played in Red Dead Two. Oh, of course, that's um, Dutch from Red Dead Two. Really? Yeah. Okay, that's something. Um, but I don't think. Yeah, there's no other board. It's not. It's not the same guy. It's not the no. real Marcus. He, he did a good job. You yeah, know, he I was mean, good. Yeah. But like, as you can see, everyone who's listening, there's these like I would say pockets of dust of like decent moments and they're like super fleeting like you just notice it and it's like in one ear out the other i thought you know i i thought i know that a lot of these actors or actresses in the film are defensible and that they're they're proven in other areas but i feel like everyone was bad in this movie no one wanted to be there and 
I feel like no one studied their characters that they were reprising enough. No. Uh, like I thought, like for example, Tiny Tina was a little more redeemable because I think she was just written horribly. But like one of Tiny Tina's very common quirks is to talk a bit like this and then like just switch the tones and like yeah, none of crazy. that. None yeah. of that at all. Like that wasn't just a creative twist. Like that's how she talks. Like she sometimes talks like this and then like switches tones again. Like <laughs> that's a really good impression, Maddie. That's she just really doesn't. But like nothing, none of that was there. Uh, Lilith not giving a fuck. Like she's way more endearing than that. I don't think there was any study on that. Kevin Hart being Kevin Hart. Like I can't fault the guy for being himself, but like that's not Roland at all. Like Roland is yeah. way more serious, shy, even. And he's more like, get in the damn car. Like what? I just, I feel like no one studied for this yeah. movie at all their individual roles. And it's infuriating because I'm just like, you had, uh, the bag had to be sick for this movie. They, I bet yeah. all their agents were like, you're taking this role because you're going to be even more made after this. But that's the other thing. I'm like, aren't you all already super rich? Like, did, like there was rumors. A buddy of mine was telling me, this, I don't know if it's true. Apparently there was an original script that was good and it got like thrown yep. out and the movie got redone. Yep. And whoever redid this fire fire them nothing um, I good think that offer. was eli roth himself if i'm not mistaken i think because i heard that too that the original script was like amazing <laughs> and then he changed a bunch of stuff and this is uh this is what we're left with so yeah yeah it's um, yeah it's it's it, I, 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 it, it, it this review of review this talk is going to seem like we're jumping from one point to the other but that's because the movie is that way like there is no structure in this movie there's no story there's no plot there's no there's nothing to to do with this movie like i feel i feel sorry almost for the people that have to review this on ign or whatever like how do you how do you begin with this there's nothing there's like two paragraphs and then yeah. it's done yeah uh i i completely agree because it, it's gonna sound like the people who haven't seen the movie and are trying to keep an open mind which i totally respect that like this is yeah. gonna just be like us firing off for half an hour on just like it sucks it sucks it sucks but yeah like this needs to be blasted it needs to be because this is unacceptable. Yeah. We are in an era now where video game adaptations of like whether it's anime, like cyberpunk edge runners shows like fallout. Uh, there's been great video game adaptation movies like we're moving past what Borderlands feels like it was, which was made in this vacuum where like two decades ago you would do a video game movie or a decade ago you do a video game movie because you thought with big names and stars that your 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 gaming franchise are growing it didn't matter how mid it was like it's dragon ball evolution style shit where it's like oh like minus like the big names really like where you just are trying to popular like just the the only reason you're doing this is to make your ip more popular and yeah. it rightfully should be blowing up in their face and they should now work twice as hard to make it more redeemable because if borderlands 4 is bad when it rains, it pours, dude. It's not going to look good for them. It like now Borderlands Four is set up because like this is how the internet and 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 everything works. Like it just cascades from there. Like Borderlands Four now, if it fails, it's going to plummet. Like it's going to do terrible. If people start hearing word like yeah, it's bad, not as bad as the movie, but it's bad. Yeah. That's it. That's all people need to hear. So, um, a lot of people's first introduction to this franchise, like Lily said to me, she's like, I have no interest in playing the games. And I'm like, well, hold on. I was like, they're way better. Which was like, it just put such a bad taste in my mouth. Like, this is yeah. what they do for something they care about. I was like, that's fair. Like, and I imagine she's not alone on that. Like, it's just no, yeah. a bad movie. So I know it'll sound like rambling. If y'all want to go see the movie, I wouldn't even say be our guest. It's like, I'm inviting you to go torture yourself. <laughs> um, take our word for it. If you do go to the theater, have fun, come back here. Let us know your thoughts because I'm sure you'll be in alignment with us. I, I again, it's one of those move, those experiences you go through where you're like, there's no way anyone looks at this and goes like, it was okay. <coughs> there's always that one asshole. There's always that one asshole who says, it was great. I love yeah. this movie, but not with this one. Dude, I'm I, positive I saw there won't one be, review yeah. when the tweet started breaking. I was like, it's actually a fun time. Like I kind of liked it. I'm like, no. how? How is that even possible? Like this is like movie snobs and movie casuals can now unite in something here and, and hate <laughs> something together. And it's borderlands. It's impossible to think this movie is good. I'm sorry. There's nothing here. Yeah. Well, Maddie, the, the most important thing of course is where does it rank on, on your list? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to do that. Number one. Sorry, Blade Runner. <laughs> yeah. Anything else you want to get off your chest? I feel pretty good. Just getting it done. Uh, no, I'm very excited for next week when we uh, get to watch a fun movie in the th or a good movie, at least. I think, yes. I hope, I pray in the theater uh, yes. with Ali Alien Romulus. 
yeah let's hope dude like uh it, it looks I, I there have been some comparison photos i've seen of like alien and aliens to romulus and i you can see like the difference in like set and prop design and and how like the older ones were way better but uh we'll see how it looks in a vacuum yeah i i i feel more optimistic because this is more like a return to a horror roots how about a land so yeah we'll see we'll see but Ladies and gentlemen, that's our review of Borderlands. We hope you enjoyed. Do not go out and see this movie. That's our verdict. And uh, we'll be back next week for another movie review for Alien Romulus and also our next episode of Call Sheet, which is going to be Aliens. So a lot of Alien next week. So until then, Locke, thank you for suffering through this movie with me. And we'll catch all of you in the next episode. Peace out.